Bueno, estamos viendo imágenes de Douglas Harley y Robert Benham, los dos astronautas que se convirtieron en los héroes del momento en Estados Unidos, mientras saludan al público y allí se preparan para su lanzamiento. Un lanzamiento que se vio postergado por razones meteorológicas el día miércoles y finalmente se hizo el día sábado, donde tampoco había muy buen clima, pero finalmente el Falcon 9, accionado por sus motores Merlin, pudo salir de la torre de lanzamiento y finalmente impulsar a estos hombres al espacio y poner fin de esa manera una larga espera de nueve años, ya que fue en el 2011 cuando el transbordador espacial Atlantis impulsó por última vez a astronautas norteamericanos desde su suelo. Por eso la gran expectativa que hubo en este lanzamiento. Allí estamos viendo el acople de la cápsula Dragón a la Estación Espacial Internacional un proceso que llevó varias horas y que nosotros transmitimos y doblamos al español en directo. Lógicamente este es un acoplamiento muy gradual y los astronautas pudieron luego pasar desde la nave Dragón a la Estación Espacial Internacional donde eran esperados por sus compañeros. Eh, allí está Cassidy, que es el comandante de la misión, y los dos cosmonautas, obviamente, de origen ruso. Así que había una gran satisfacción, ahora los astronautas se van a quedar uno a cinco meses, todavía la NASA o SpaceX no han dicho cuál va a ser la extensión final de la misión. Elon Musk, el titular de SpaceX durante una conferencia de prensa con funcionarios de la NASA, hizo declaraciones y nosotros la doblamos al español para todos ustedes. Vamos a escucharlo. Just, uh, uh, Yeah, uh, acknowledge the incredible work of the people at SpaceX and, and NASA and everyone in, in cre uh, creating this technology and in, uh, the, in what has culminated in this incredible launch today of getting astronauts back to orbit after almost a decade uh, should really get people, I mean, right on the heart of anyone who is, uh, has any spirit of exploration And the United States is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. I think this is something that's particularly important um, in the United States, but appeals to everyone with the, uh, throughout the world who has within them the spirit of exploration. So, um, I mean, I'm really quite overcome uh, with emotion on uh, this day. It's, it's kind of hard to talk, frankly. Um, I've been 18 years working towards this goal, so. It's, it's hard to believe that it's happened. Um, when we haven't quite yet docked at the space station, and of course we need to bring them back safely and we need to repeat these, these missions um, and have this be a regular occurrence. Um, so it's a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's just incredible. I, I think this is something that everyone, you know, it's, this is a, a craft made by humans, you know, for humans. This is like something that I think humanity should be excited about and proud of occurring on this day. I think this is, uh, this is a day that is, that I think uh, everyone can be proud of, that uh, it's, it's a good day to be, it, th this event is something that, that any, all, all of humanity can get excited about. Um, it's just a fundamentally positive good thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we need, we need more positive good things in this world. On, on Wednesday, during the first, first countdown, I'd say that I, Uh, my adrenaline was railed at 100%, um, and when, when the launch was called off, it went to 0%. <laughs> it was like I just basically collapsed and slept the, the longest time I'd slept in probably a year. Um, then oddly enough, today, I don't know, it felt like the, just the fates were aligned, and I, I didn't, feel, didn't feel nervous, didn't feel, for whatever reason, I did not, I did not feel nervous a tremendous accomplishment uh, for SpaceX in partnership with NASA and a number of critical suppliers. In fact, if I think about the total number of people involved in making this mission successful, it probably adds up to 100,000. So I'd just like to uh, just to express a word of appreciation and congratulations again for t to uh, everyone involved in making this successful. Um, and 
I actually, and just a just special special word to the administrator and Kathy, and you know, it's just a everyone involved. It's just a, wow. Um, anyway, um, it, it is it is a little hard to process. Like I think at this point, I am somewhat overcome by emotion to try to come up with uh, cohesive, you know, sentences that make any sense is quite difficult. I, but I think the, the this is hopefully the first step on a journey towards a civilization on on Mars, life becoming multiplanetary, you know, based on the Moon and expand expanding beyond Earth, and, and life becoming a multiplanet species, life becoming multiplanetary for the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. I think this is hopefully the first step on that journey. Um, it will require a, a tremendous amount of innovation and technology development to make going to orbit and ultimately beyond orbit uh, a routine matter where thousands and perhaps ultimately millions of people can travel to other planets. That's, that's what we really need to achieve over time. We're, and and that, that's, that's obviously a very difficult goal, but that's... Um, so that's seeming increasingly real with what happened today, that um, getting people to orbit finally after 18 years. If we, if we are able to increase that, the rate of innovation, then life can become multiplanetary. This is the goal we should strive for. Yeah, I, human spaceflight was, was always the goal, the, the, the fundamental goal of SpaceX. Well, like I said, to, uh, create the technologies or help create the technologies necessary to make life sustainably multiplanetary. I can't emphasize I cannot emphasize this enough. This is the thing that we need to do. We must make life sustainably multi multiplanetary. It's not one planet to the ex exclusion of another, but to um, extend life beyond Earth, we are life's agent in this regard. Um, all the creatures that and the, the plants and everyone that, that exist here on Earth, we can bring them to other planets and and it's very important that we do so as soon as possible, I think, while, while the window of opportunity is open. Um, I, 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 call upon, I call upon the public to support this goal and to think about this goal and think about how important it is and how fundamental it is to the future. We've got to get it done. The launching satellites is, is nice, of course, um, and it... Uh, Keeps the you know we've got to bring in more money than we spend. This is important, but it's ultimately uh, all about life beyond Earth. N NASA made us way better than we would otherwise have been, and obviously we couldn't even have got started without NASA. So thank you very much for your support. You know. <laughs> um, so um, but I'm mean, optimistic in general, so I guess that extends the schedules too. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it, I guess I, I, would, I would wish that we could do it in two years. Uh, I don't know, that might mean four. <laughs> but I think, I, I don't know, we'll, I think it's not out of the question that it could be two years. Um, I, I would be surprised if it took more than four. God, maybe I just blank out the word doubt. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, uh, no, I mean, I, to be totally frank, I doubted us, too. So I, I thought we, uh, you know, had maybe, when starting SpaceX, may, maybe had a 10% chance of reaching orbit. So, so you know, to those who, who doubted us, I was like, well, I think you're probably right, you know. Um, I mean, the number of times uh, that I, I was told, like, because uh, I was taking the money that I earned from, from PayPal and, and rolling it into to create SpaceX and Tesla and, and, and I was, ended up spending it all, it wasn't the intention, but, um, and, and, and uh, almost both companies went bankrupt, frankly. 2008 was a tough year. Um, you know, it took us, took us uh, four attempts just to get to orbit with Falcon 1. Um, and uh, so, but a lot of times I was, you know, I, I, people would tell me this joke, like, how do you make a small fortune in the rocket industry? You start with a large one is the punchline. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I already heard that joke 12,000 times, you know. <laughs> so, so um, 
anyway, um, and it was it, it almost came true. Um, you know, we we just barely made it there. That fourth launch of Falcon One. That's all the money we had for that fourth launch, and then. Uh, it, and that wasn't even enough to, to save the company. We also then had to win the NASA cargo resupply contract. Um, so that, that came a little after, you know, a little, little bit later, or right towards the end of 2008. Um, those are the two key things that, that saved SpaceX. Otherwise, we would have, we would have, you know, not made it. So, um, so hey, I think those those data were, <laughs> their probability assessment was correct, um, but fortunately. Uh, Beta smiled upon us and brought us to this day. Yeah, I, human spaceflight was was always the goal, the, the the fundamental goal of SpaceX. Well, like I said, to uh, create the technologies or help create the technologies necessary to make life sustainably multiplanetary. I can't emphasize I cannot emphasize this enough. This is the thing that we need to do. We must make life sustainably multi multiplanetary. It's not one planet to the ex exclusion of another, but to um, extend life beyond Earth, we are life's agent in this regard. Um, all the creatures that and the, the plants and everyone that, that exist here on Earth, we can bring them to other planets, and, and it's very important that we do so as soon as possible, I think, while, while the window of opportunity is open. Um, well, it, it really hit home, you know, when you meet Somebody's kids, and and the the vehicle that that you're responsible for, you know, that the, their life's at stake. It, it's it's really hits home. Um, so, you know, uh, there's still so we still got to dock with the space station. We still got to um, still got to return. I think there's an argument that. The return is more, more dangerous in some ways than the ascent, so we don't want to declare a victory yet. Um, we need to bring him home safely, make sure that we, we're doing everything we can to minimize that risk of, of re-entry and, and return. Uh, the, uh, we were able to do that with the Demo-1 vehicle, so uh, we were able to retire a lot of risk with the re-entry there. That, that's a big deal. but. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, anyway. Get get it choked up here. So it it, it it's it really this. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm getting choked up. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure I can answer the question any more than that. Except, um, yeah, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure it gets home safely. <laughs>